I mentioned that our theme, our Bible story today, is nearly, unashamedly, unembarrassingly pouring out everything she has. A jar of expensive perfume to Jesus. So, again, just thinking about this, I've got some hand cream, some scented hand cream with me, and I'm just going to share it around so to everyone have a chance to have a little hand cream, hopefully scented. Just take time. So rub it into your hands and enjoy that sensation of hand cream, the fragrance of it. So if I can have one or two people to help me just hand this round. If you can get this as many people as possible. One of those, and those who don't get a small one. So if we got one of the again one of the little ones, we've got plenty of spare. <laughs> so anyone have a go? Unless you're allergic to hand cream. <laughs> oh, something like that. Give me a couple. It's not too strong smell. Well done. You can briefly be in through your mask to smell it if you want. Unless you've lost your head to smell the chemicals. Anyone else? Oh, it might go with the smell of the chemicals. Probably not a good idea for this. Who's not on it yet? Do you want some? This is, this is your chance at home as well if you've got any hand cream or scented hand cream nearby. Do find a bit for yourself at home. Let me do this. And it's just a chance to take a moment to get a bit of hand cream on your hands. Sometimes we don't do this often enough. The little bit of a sense to it, just to enjoy that sensation, the smell, the feel of the hand cream on your hands and the time that you, you take to do that. This is going to take you a while to ask isn't it? So bear with me. Take your time. I won't be able to handle the paper in front of me, so it will take, take a while. But this is just a chance to experience that scented, that fragrance hand cream on our hands. And one of the reasons I use hand cream is in our story today, we see Mary pouring out expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. I decided not to ask you to get your feet out. Um, and the fragrance fills the room when she pours out this perfume. And not only that, it wouldn't have been the liquid perfume that we're used to now, it probably would have been more solid. Oily is perfume that we hear about in the story. So that's why we're using hand cream as something a little bit close to that. So, as we carry on thinking about that and how that feels, let's come together and say some words of confession as you go on. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. Lazarus, whom they had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who could not be chosen said, Why was this virgin not sold for three hundred and nine and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept nothing and he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in. <laughs> Jesus said, Leave her alone. She did, so that she might keep it. Day of my you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me.
that at the start with a friend. Holy Spirit, will you take my words and speak to each one of us according to our needs. Amen. I'm going to start with a story quite a little while ago. Soon after I first met Chris, sorry, I didn't warn you this, Chris. Um, he persuaded me to join him with volunteering at the prizes at Christmas. He was rather more enthusiastic and used to it than I was. So, no Carol, keep my go. The prizes at Christmas runs over the week leading up to, I think it's before, just before I met the Christmas, Chris? Oh, 23rd to the 30th. Lovely, thank you. So, it stops just short of the new year. Well, it used to take it, uh, it used to have you know, great big sort of warehousing sort of venue with sort of hundreds of people coming in who are normally living homelessly and in need of some love and some attention and it's being kept warm and fed and looked after over that week around Christmas. A chance to share love and generosity with a lot of people who live on the streets. Well, this is my first to experience what this was like. And one of the things that I did as a volunteer while I was there is I had a couple of hours to spend on the station where they were getting manicures and pedicures to some of these men. So it was a moment to spend giving deep attention to unloved hands and feet for people who lived on the streets, some, some of them for a long time. Some of them may not have long life expectancies unless there's a lot of intervention and change in their lives. And so we washed and dried their hands. We rested their hands on a fresh, clean, rolled up towel. We slowly filed away the thickened and blackened nails. And for some people that takes a long time. We moisturized the cracked skin around the nails. We talked but hopefully we listened to more, though many didn't want to speak much. It was a unique moment for each client to sit and just have one person focused on them and caring for them in this simple way. When else do we pay such attention to other people's hands or feet unless we take ourselves off for a beauty, spa, beauty or spa treatment? I think of it as something that might be done for an elderly person in, in a nursing home. Someone who's not had so, such time spent on them for a long time. Someone who might be lonely and frail. Their skin papery, thin and dry. The time given by one carer or perhaps a grandchild in sitting with them mm -hmm. and gently rubbing fragrant hand cream into their hands, that time is precious and valuable. A time for patience and listening to their stories and in simply sitting there, there with them. A time that for many has been sorely missed over the last two years. So we shared that hand cream around earlier to feel that coolness, appreciate that time, that fragrance, that moment of, of giving to each other if we were sharing it around. And just to pause over such a simple thing. Back at Christmas at Christmas, in the storage area, there were crates piled high with fresh, clean, fluffy white towels donated by the local hotels. And because there was no way to get those towels fully cleaned and dried after every use, every single towel was thrown away after one use. Two or three towels were used for each client on the mannequin, more if they had their big done as well. And you may recognize the hint of Judas's attitude from our Bible reading today when I say I was horrified by such waste. Surely they could be reused, couldn't they? But no, a lot of thought has gone into those logistics. Hands up if right now you are working out in your head what they could have done differently to avoid wasting all those towns. Thank you, you're honest, a couple of honest ones. I certainly did a bit of that. Our story today revolves around an, an act of astonishing, wasteful generosity. And I wanted to remind you of the foolish, prodigal generosity of the father in our story last week, when we talked about the prodigal son's return home 
to an undeserved feast. In our reading today, there's so much going on in Mary's wildly extravagant use of expensive nuts to anoint Jesus' feet. I used hand cream earlier because I think the perfume referred to in the story may well have been more solid or oily than the perfumes we know now. Why does Mary do it? It's an outrageous waste. She's full of gratitude for Jesus, bringing her brother Lazarus back from the dead. She's full of love for all that he is and all that he teaches. She knows something of Jesus' impending death, so that she has brought this costly perfume, which was, was to have been saved for the day of his burial. But in fact, she uses it now as gratitude wells up in her heart. And she pours out the perfume in an act that is both an anointing and a pre preparation. She may not know the full significance of what she's doing in this moment of tenderly anointing his feet with perfume and wiping his feet with her hair. She may not know that her actions are prophetic. What we know is that her actions speak powerfully. Actions speak louder than words. And so, passage gives us no words from her. Instead, this prophetic and beautiful moment is rudely interrupted by Judas. While Mary is busy making a spectacle of herself, Judas has been quickly working out in his mind exactly how much the perfume is worth that has been poured over Jesus' feet, and he had plenty to say on the matter. For Judas, that perfume is now worthless. It cannot be sold. What might have been a solid investment in one household is now wasted in one flamboyant moment of extravagance. It was worth a lot of money, and Judas, ever the counter of pennies, is furious. He can't find a way of expressing this without dressing it up as righteous anger. And so he says, think of how many poor people could have been fed with that amount of money. He doesn't care about the poor, but it sounds like a virtuous argument. Jesus' response is quick and uncompromising. Leave her alone. She bought it for this purpose. The poor you shall always have with you but you do not always have me. The poor you shall always have with you. And many have misinterpreted this statement as suggesting that to care for the poor is a hopeless task, as the need never goes away. A counsel of despair, if you like. But it's not intended like that. In fact, it's the opposite. Jesus was in fact looking back to a verse in Deuteronomy 15 which calls God's people to always be considering the plight of the poor. It was a call to continuous concern and care for the poor, but the need is always there. It's not a permission to neglect the poor. And yet, in saying you will not always have me with you, he's also affirming Mary's extravagance which imitates the extravagant generosity of God himself. Somehow, we must be find ways, we be always seeking ways to, um, for the poor, to serve the poor and to lift people out of poverty wherever we can, without letting go of what might seem to the world as being foolish wastefulness in our worship of God. Every church Perhaps every charity has this challenge. How to be wise and careful with spending what we have. To be as effective as possible for those we wish to serve. And yet recognising those moments where we are called to give generously and abundantly. Even if it might seem to be for something that lasts only a fleeting time. In God's economy, nothing that is done in his service and for his glory was wasted. No time spent on our knees in prayer is wasted. 
So I keep needing to remind myself that this is life. And if God calls us to give generously for a particular need, then we can do so confidently, without looking nervously at all the competing needs at the same time. And perhaps this brings us back to something that we're discovering about God's kingdom, God's economy, that we can only see in part at the moment. That God's resources are without limit, whereas we know that our own possessions are finite. In this world, more for one thing than less for someone else. In God's kingdom, there is plenty for everyone. So perhaps part of our call as we stand between these two worlds and as we follow Christ is to take every opportunity that comes our way to choose generosity, to choose to give more, to choose to give beyond our comfort zones, to keep step back and counting exactly how much we need to hold on to, and instead considering all we have as belonging to God is able to provide for all that we need. I know how often I am more Judas than Mary in my decision making. So often my first desire to give generously to something or someone is held back by fear and counting the cost. And this call to generosity may feel particularly impossible right now for the many people facing real fuel and food poverty. Resources may be scarce for the millions of refugees on the move around the world today. And for many of us here, maybe like time is the resource that is most scarce. And yet, as Christians, we continue to seek every way we can to step into the abundance and generosity of God's provision, so we can keep worshipping Him and reaching out to those in need around us. In our reading today, it was Mary that understood the heart of God with her abundant thankfulness and generosity. It was Judas who made his decisions out of fear and who failed to understand the unlimited resources of God's love. And yet, the grace of Jesus Christ is broad enough to include them both, not even Judas was beyond the scope of God's salvation through the cross. In the meantime, let us cultivate as much of Mary's heart for unashamed generosity and worship as we can. Let us always be seeking ways to waste time and effort in our worship of God. And let us always be seeking Jesus in the face of the poor as we find every way we can to serve all who are in need.